Hey, welcome back to New Zero Lands. In the last episode of the car conversion project, I got the rest of the bike taken apart, and at the very end, I teased about 3D scanning all these parts. All right, fast forward a couple days. Let's put this motor in the computer. When it comes to custom mounting stuff that wasn't meant to fit in a car, some people take measurements, some people make drawings, but I wanna see these parts in 3D. About nine years ago, I got this 3D scanner off Amazon for 400 bucks. It's called the Sense Scanner, and it's really not that fancy. I'm pretty sure iPhones can do this quality now. But I like that it scans one-to-one -one scale, so it makes it really easy to mix and match parts. In the end, it's just another tool, and I'm only 3D scanning stuff because it's the easiest way for me to visualize how everything tetrises together without taking the car apart first. I also scanned the battery a few days before. Here are some behind the scenes of that. Is this the behind the scenes if I include it in a video? I don't, I don't know how that works. It's just part of the video, I guess. And just as I was about to put all this stuff into the scan of the car, my buddy Julian hit me up and said his friend Dean had a professional quality scanner and was so interested in the project that he wanted to come over and scan this stuff for me in higher detail. So I have to give him a plug because the scans he does are seriously impressive. Check out his Instagram if you're into that kind of stuff. The resolution is next level. This doesn't even look like a scan. It just looks like somebody modeled this. Dean scanned the motor and the battery, so I threw both of those into Maya to see where I could put them. I'm only using Maya because I don't know how anything else works. I know people love Fusion 360 and SolidWorks and stuff, but um, yeah, I, I didn't want to learn a new program. And also I can animate stuff, so that's cool. So here's the car, right? Or at least a, a rough scan of it. Originally I thought the battery was so big that it would only fit up front. And I mean, this all this stuff is coming out, like the radiator, the AC, a bunch of stuff. So I tried that out and it's crazy how well it fits up there. Like the airflow would be great going straight into those cooling channels. I thought it was such a good idea that I photoshopped a t-shirt design for it. Um, yeah, I got way ahead of myself and that's probably why this project is taking so long. If I gave you the impression that I'm some kind of engineering master, that's really not what's going on here. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. So obviously that's a whole lot of weight in the wrong place, like it's a mid-engine car, you want everything in the back. And also if I had the battery up front, that's like front-end collisions would be kind of sketchy. So yeah, I'm moving it to the back. When we had the car on the lift, Simon pointed out how perfectly the size was to lay it horizontally across the back of the firewall. So I tried that instead. But it doesn't leave much room for the motor. It would have to be right up against the battery and even then, there isn't enough room for the huge sprocket. And I mean, the axles are cutting straight through the motor, so that's not gonna work. So my current idea is a layout like this. Mount the battery vertically like it is in the bike and put it on the passenger side to balance out the weight. And then the motor behind the driver's seat so the sprockets are in line with where the diff goes. That keeps all the heavy stuff as central as possible. And also, check this out. The battery weighs about 130 kilos. Me plus the motor weigh about 130 kilos. So the balance side to side is perfect. The battery is really tall, and I don't want to go lower than the frame, obviously, I don't think that's even allowed legally. Although scraping the bottom of the battery on speed bumps and shooting sparks would look pretty cool. But I have some room up at the top. There's actually an access hatch you can take off to work on the engine. So if I need to, I can raise the battery up a little bit and go through this, and then build my own custom access hatch that goes up a little bit higher than the original. And also, having this access hatch here is going to make it easier to change the oil since the filler cap on the motor is at the top. Now onto the other components, which are pretty exciting too. So the controller was another thing I scanned, super rough, and a buddy was like, hey, here's an official model of that controller from the company that makes them in one-to-one -one scale. So I'll just delete my scan then. On the bike, the controller sits on top of the battery, but since that would be way above the car and I'm not going for a Back to the Future style, I'm thinking about mounting it on the side like this, like right on the side of the battery. Then just extend all the high voltage cables, yeah, I didn't have to model these, but I figured just, you know, just to see what it would look like, it'd be cool to visualize it. Um, yeah, I'll do more of these later. And yes, these phase cables are arranged correctly. Remember when I said, the way they're arranged, it isn't A, B, C. It's like, this one is B, so it's B, A, C. And that's going to confuse the hell out of me once this is in the car and it's all like upside down. This will be mounted somewhere. I don't know. I guess this is what I was talking about and I just didn't know yet. But what about the radiator, you ask? Oh, you didn't ask? Okay. Well, check this out anyway. The Beat has these air vents on the sides. And as it turns out, they're functional. 
This one goes to the cold air intake. So I'll mount the radiator vertically right here instead of horizontally so it can get as much air as possible. It's like it was meant to be. Then I found a legit Bosch water pump, exactly like the one on the bike, and a little coolant reservoir, and extruded some more curves for the coolant lines, again, just so I could visualize it. I feel like this helps a lot. The charging port's gonna be behind the license plate, and the car has these vents in the rear bumper, right? So the charger with his fan can go behind there. So instead of seeing an exhaust back there, you'll see a fan. How cool would that be? So this is the plan. I feel like it's gonna fit perfectly. I know it's gonna get way more complicated as I keep adding more things to it, but baby steps, you know? This is all the big stuff, so I'll get into more of the smaller details soon. Now for something different. A package came the other day from Japan. This is a one-way Cusco LSD that I got from Black Hawk Japan. And just when I was saying the whole overnight parts from Japan thing wasn't realistic anymore, I got this in three days. Like, shipped, cleared customs, and was in my hands in three days. Ooh, it smells. It smells like grease. Aside from the donor bike, this has been the most expensive part of the conversion. But this is one of the most important parts. Look how small this thing is. It's pretty heavy though, like four kilos. Or two kilos less than our cat. Okay, so you've seen how this works in 3D with, you know, basically the same idea as a motorcycle where you have a big rear sprocket uh, mounted to the diff, but here's how it looks in real life. Okay, so instead of the rear sprocket being on the wheel, uh, actually, let me take that off first. Fun fact, I've never taken a sprocket off a bike before. Never done custom gearing or anything. The first time I'm doing it is in a car. Kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Cool. Shing. Oh, this thing is so smelly. I wish you guys could smell it. It's, it's like Big Thunder Mountain. That'll hopefully make sense to somebody. So, here's the idea, right? Actually, let me set this up on a tripod again. The idea is get your sprocket, get your diff, and just bolt them together like that. I mean, I'd make a custom one so that the bolt holes match. The, where the diff holes are, like bolt them to these these ones out here, uh, and then yeah, the whole thing. So like axles would go in each side of this, and this whole thing would spin like that uh, together, and there'd be a chain that goes to the motor. You guys saw it in 3D, and yeah, this whole thing would just spin like that, and then the whoa, limited slip stuff would just work its magic. However, that works. Yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of the idea. That's what it's going to look like. Except I'm going to go from a 44 tooth sprocket up to like a 60. So it's going to get a lot bigger and it's going to be a lot more torquey. So it should be cool. But this deserves its own whole video and I haven't even made the custom sprocket yet. So sometime in the future. But in the next episode, now that I know how everything could potentially fit together in the car, I can finally assemble this mess and see if it works outside of the bike. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.